Even as buyer demand slowed way down this year, homeowners in America have decided they have no urgency to sell. It's early in this, this next part of the cycle, but sellers seem to be winning this battle. Homeowners in America are in such a strong financial position that very few seem compelled to sell into a market with weak demand. The result is that dramatically fewer new listings each week are coming to market. And tighter selection is resulting for those buyers who are out there right now. So week by week, we're watching this unfold. We're going to start 2023 still in the throes of this prolonged shortage of available inventory for home buyers. Sellers don't have to sell, but the buyers who are out there are those who need to buy. Every week, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country. We analyze all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in that data, and we make it available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. If you aren't using Altos Market Reports with your clients, your buyers and sellers right now, it might be the time to step up. Uh, go to altosresearch.com and book a free consult with our team because everybody is worried about what's happening in the market right now. They need you to help them see clearly. I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the CEO of Altos Research. And here's what we're looking at for the week of August 22, 2022. Available inventory of homes for sale is Unchanged, basically unchanged from last week at just over 551,000. No inventory growth across the country this week. In June, we were seeing 6 to 8% weekly inventory growth. That's all gone. Uh, it's not uncommon for August to have flat inventory. As, as the summer ages, school starts, fewer homes are listed and sell. That's, that's pretty common. So the important thing is actually not that inventory isn't growing. The important thing to note here is that if your view on where the housing market is or is heading, if that's based on evidence from June and July, you're probably drawing the wrong conclusion. What we know now is that we're going to start 2023 as yet another year with a pretty severe shortage of homes for sale. It's hard to get supply and demand out of balance when supply is so short. Uh, we can see this remarkable trend in the inventory forecast model that we do. Uh, as a result of each week, with fewer than expected new listings, slower than expected inventory growth, it now looks pretty clear that we're gonna end the year with barely 500,000 single family homes active on the market. We're, we're at 551,000 right now, and the forecast still allows for a few weeks of bigger increase uh, before the end of the summer. So maybe peak at about 580,000, each line here is a year, and you can see the dotted line projects that we still have a few weeks of, of increased inventory, potentially. Uh, then over the holidays, the decline is slower than normal with, with weaker demand is what we're projecting. Uh, but just a few weeks ago, we were assuming that <clears throat> inventory would already have passed the 2022 levels by now. Mid-August, you can see the tan line here is 2022 or 2020. And now it looks like it's going to be the middle of September at the earliest. And really, this projection could still be too high. Now, we've been undershooting inventory levels each of the last several weeks. And if the year follows a more normal holiday curve, we could end the year with only 450,000 homes on the market. And that would be incredibly tight for buyers in the spring. We 
We'll spend more time with the forecast model and the alternative scenarios uh, when we do our monthly webinar. Uh, the next one is scheduled for Tuesday, September 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific. You can register to save your space for that by clicking in the description below. Uh, there's uh, These are limited to 1,000 attendees, and we've had much more demand than that each month. So register now to save your space. That's September 20th for the hour-long Altos Research webinar. We'll also, in that webinar, investigate the bearish case for real estate, which is what happens if we enter a big, deep recession with lots of job losses. Unemployment grows and stays extensive. I don't know if that's coming. I don't predict recessions. But I do know that once we have significant unemployment, it's at least another year out in the future before the real estate market sees the resulting inventory from people who've lost their jobs and are forced to sell their homes. So since we are at very low unemployment now, let's say a recession hits hard and we have significant unemployment next year at this time. This implies that it's 2024 or 2025 before we actually see inventory surge. We actually discussed this timeline with Darren Blomquist from auction.com in the Altos Top of Mind podcast last week. Auction.com has some really unique insights uh, about how, to, how quickly or slowly a recession turns homes turns into homes on the market. So check out that podcast if you're interested in, in thinking about this timeline. of If you're in the camp who's predicting an imminent housing crash because you expect the economy to crash, you might prepare yourself to be disappointed for 24 months at least. So that's the supply side. What about the buy side? You know, we've seen price reductions skyrocket this summer as well. Suddenly homes that had multiple bidders were now sitting with none. Then we have price cuts galore. So the question is, are sellers still lopping their price down to, to find new buyers? So the answer here is kind of surprising also. As of this week, 39% of the homes on the market have taken a price cut from their original list price across the country. That's up only a fraction from last week. You can see the slope of the dark red line here has started to plateau. Each week, some of the homes are selling, some are being withdrawn, uh, and some, some, are, some are taking price cuts. But what this shows us is that not that many more are taking price cuts each week. And so this, show, this illustrates that the market is not deteriorating from here. From the slope of this curve on the dark red line, you can, you can see that we, we obviously have fewer buyers now than, than any time in the past bunch of years. But there's nothing in the data that shows major price declines across the country uh, anytime soon. So if you're listing your house now, you'll do it at a discount so that you don't have to do a price reduction. You'd, and it'd be a discount to what it was six months ago. Um, the median price of the newly listed cohort of homes for sale uh, fell one and a quarter percent this week to $393,900. Uh, like our inventory plateau, this is seasonal. So the I expect new listings prices to pull back each week for the rest of the year. That's the light colored line here. Uh, this is the median price of all those homes that hit the market this week. And you can see each yearly cycle in that light red line. Uh, prices always pull back. They spike early in the year and then they pull back a little bit later. You know, after if you're listing after school starts, you have to do it at a little discount so that you know the house sells. See especially the, the, the curves in 2017 and 2018 here. There's a big spike in the first and second quarter and then a pullback in the third and fourth quarter. So what we're seeing right now is normal, and, uh, but it is strong enough that tells us we don't have you know, home price gains on the future uh, for probably for 2023. Like that's a leading indicator of where transaction prices will happen in the future. The median price of all the homes on the market is $449,000, which is unchanged from last week. Uh, this is also normal to have it unchanged this time of year. 
There's lots of room for the median home price to retreat later in the year. Uh, and we're going to still land at a you know, 10% or more home price appreciation for all of 2022. It's funny because this, this measure feels like home prices are moving slowly. But just remember that the headlines, the headlines are citing transactions, they're going to be in the mid-teens for several more months, even though the, the active prices have pulled back a little bit. Uh, so let's now measure supply and demand in the same view. This is the immediate sales tracker, and it shows a sharp decline in the new listings each week since July 4th. That's the dark red portion of the line here. New sellers, they're just not interested in testing the market, and they don't have to be, right? Why would they be? They, everyone is a, is a cheap mortgage and a ton of equity. Rents are very high. All of those things add up to a, it's a very good time to just own your real estate. No one feels the urgency to sell. Uh, with just over 80,000 new single family listings coming to market this week, that's significantly lower than last year at this time, which was closer to 100,000. Uh, it's fascinating that we still have some immediate sales happening. That's the light portion of each bar here. Uh, and probably this is because inventory is actually very limited and the best homes priced well, still able to get their offers and go into contract very quickly. Uh, if you look at the state level here, you'll see that uh, places like Georgia, North Carolina and Tennessee are states where we're seeing more of those immediate sales than in places like Arizona, Texas or Florida. That kind of implies to me that the speculators, the heavy speculators in those frothy markets have, are the ones who've pulled way back. That's actually probably very healthy for the market. Uh, it's something to keep our eye on here. Our, our immediate sales should shrink over the holidays, the fall and the holidays. And it'll be really fascinating to see next spring what what buyer demand brings there. Buyers will still probably have to be kind of aggressive because we'll have so few homes on the market. What a surprise that would be. Uh, if you have buyers and sellers looking for guidance right now, they're probably going to be surprised by what they're seeing. Inventory is way tighter and it's not getting bigger. Uh, so make sure you get them the data so that they can see what's happening in, their, in your local market. Uh, even in the most hard hit markets, you know, we can see the parts that are slowing and the parts that are moving. So your buyers and sellers need to know what's happening right now. Go to altosresearch.com, sign up so you can get the data in your hands and in the hands of your clients today. There's a link to Altos in the description below. Uh, there will be no video next week, last vacation days of the summer for me. So. We will be back in action for Labor Day week, probably do it on Tuesday. The, our next webinar I mentioned is, is Tuesday, the September 20th, and you can register for that below. That's all the time we have for this week. More next, more in two weeks.